Hi, it's Megan. I did an earlier video on the Dior Trion collection, a couple pieces that I had. The rosy uh, Dior Show Fusion eyeshadow, one of the lipsticks, and the blush. And I really like the collection. And I ended up, oh gosh, I ended up getting more of it. So what had originally drawn me is the blush. So this is what it looks like. It's a limited edition Dior blush. It's still online at most of the major department stores that are selling it. It's not out of stock yet, but it will be at some point because it's limited edition. So this one is called Trianon Edition Dior Blush. And I'm not going to do a review for it because I already did and I'll put a link in the description. But I've just fallen in love with it. It's got, you know, a brush which is mostly useless, but it's got, it doesn't look quite right, but it's like this amazing coral color. So I put it on, put it on a little heavier, and I didn't mix it with bronze, which I usually do for the videos because it just looks better, but I just didn't, so you could see the color, and I didn't blend it in as much as I normally would. It blends beautifully, it lasts great. I just love the color. For me, these peachy tones, squirrely tones, because I've got kind of a warm yellowish undertone, work better than some of the more pink ones. And then this blush, the formula was just so smooth and blendable and gorgeous, and it goes on, I think, a lot more wearable than it looks in the pan. So I'm going to link to the full review on that, but I was so curious. I've never used before these Dior Fusion shadows, and this time they had some new matte ones. I love matte because I put so much shimmer on anyway, and I didn't now. I didn't put like highlighters or whatever, so you could just see the products I'm using, but I put so much shimmer on at a certain point, I kind of need mattes in my arsenal, and I did a review for Rosie which I'm just going to show you real quick, which basically is the limited edition. There were two that were kind of this purplish shade. This was a limited edition one from Nordstrom, and I thought it went on really sheer, really shimmery, really sheer. Very pretty, um, and it fell out of my pot, but it was really pretty. I liked it, but I was starting to feel like, gosh, is everything super sheer this spring, which is fine. I like sheer since a lot of the lip colors were so bright, but I was blown away by the matte shadows. So let me show you. So I got two. This one is Fantasy, 641 is the number. Love these with a passion. And I have outdoor swatches. For some reason, I got this great new lens and it doesn't seem to be taking these close-up pictures like it was supposed to, so I need to figure out why. But I did the best swatches I could. This is just a pure pink. It doesn't have fuchsia undertones. It's just a really soft, yeah, it's not gonna show on my, it's like, it's so soft. It's not going to show, but I did it right there. And I put this up right here under my eyebrows. And so what a color like this does, so it's, like I said, a pure pink, matte. The texture is super cushy and super blendable. I had read that from Dior, that if you used a brush, you got a much more... Um, pigmented application than if you use your finger. I found that was definitely true with the rosy. I did not find that true with the two mattes that I got. This type of a color is basically just going to make your skin look perfect. It's not going to look like you're overdone, but you can see how it just makes me look a lot more polished. You can all, I would also use it as just an eyeshadow with a brighter lip color. It would look absolutely stunning and gorgeous and I've played around with it. It does. Really, really pretty. So these are like little velvet cushions. They're a cream powdery thing, um, if that makes sense. They're more of a cream than a powder, but they don't, they're not as wet, in my opinion, as a full cream shadow, and they just apply like butter. It's just unbelievable. I've never, never felt a texture quite like this. So there were four, I guess, under the Fusion Mono Matte, and I've got two. I hate the little brush that comes with it, which I'm not going to be able to get out now. I hate it. It just doesn't work at all on me. It's adorable. It's like this. And you open it up and you go like this. It's this cute little brush. I hate it. I'm sorry, but I just don't like it all that much. It's better than the one that came in the rosy, though. But uh, I just find it digs too much into... See how thin it is? It digs too much into that soft formula. So I like using a brush that's not quite as pointy with such a soft... Um, formula. I will use this for other things. Like I love the liner brush idea. I just think it's too hard, too pointy for the actual product. Uh, they say it's basically a pure matte color and they do sheer out a lot, but I found the opposite. I also found that I had to build them up a little bit. 
so you can cheer them out but these are so the two colors I got are so light that I don't I felt the opposite I felt like I kind of needed to build it up so fantasy number 641 is a soft light me uh, a soft light medium pinky peach and it is pretty opaque what I like because I'm gonna show you the lip in a minute is since it is pink pure pink with just a tiny peach undertone as opposed to like a fuchsia or something it works with the rest of the collection obviously it makes sense right where you have kind of the same pink ranging to slightly coral slightly orange undertones definitely not in the fuchsia purplish family but it works really well together the other one I have and they last they last on me about eight hours I have not been using them mostly with a primer just because I don't know with a formula like this I kind of feel like I don't have to I'm probably wrong I've tried them both with a with a primer and without they do last an extra hour or two with the primer but I'm getting a good eight nine hours of solid coverage without the primer too so I think that looks really fabulous and um it's just a very soft natural look I didn't have problems at all with clumping um, either using my finger or using a brush I just found that they, they they really are like butter they just smoothly spread on your your eyelid or my eyelid really beautiful the next one is six no 761 Mirage which is kind of a neutral to warm toned taupe color and so taupe you know to me this looks a little bit more brown taupe you can see but definitely and I built this one up definitely kind of on the warm to neutral as opposed to super cool or super warm color with blue eyes I love colors like this I just I don't know, I guess I have a warm undertone on my skin, but the blue, I don't know, whatever. I just find these types of shades are perfect for a lot of eye colors, but for mine in particular, they just look really natural. I basically used a liner. Again, I didn't use the brush that came with this. I used this type of a brush to smooth it on my eyelid, and then I used this little brush to put it under the eyes, and then just basically reinforce it right in the crease a little bit I like how it looks it's just for me again this will last eight hours without a primer ten hours with it's just a really easy natural look that as much as I buy other things when it comes down to it since I'm usually in a hurry I play it safe and just buy the colors that or don't buy I use the colors that work and I can get ready a lot faster without thinking about it so if you look at this this is a great natural neutral daytime look I love the soft cushy formula it's just it's so hard to describe how it goes on it's like I don't know it's like I don't know, it's just so it's soft and wet but not it's just, it's really interesting very smooth creamy I really like it um, unlike any other formula I have at all the way it feels as far as the way it looks I think it's actually easier to apply than a lot of cream eyeshadows because a lot of cream eyeshadows they kind of glop on um, you have to work with them fast so they don't dry they look more natural if you can get it right but they definitely require a lot more effort and then you have to be really careful with how much you put on do you want a real sheer coverage do you want I find that they work but they're worth it they look more natural if you do it right but if you do it wrong they can look really pretty horrible so these I find a lot easier to work with kind of that hybrid the lipstick is this is what it comes this little package it is the Rouge Dior Couture Color Voluptuous Care Lipstick in 531 Rose Crinoline. And this is a limited edition. This is what it looks like. And again, I have outdoor swatches. This whole collection, I kind of fell hard for it. I like the colors. I also like the marketing concept. Trianon was one of the palaces. It was a large one in Petit Trianon that Marie Antoinette used to play in. And they have all these beautiful photos and ads with flowers and Marie Antoinette lookalikes and, you know, pastels. I just, I, I grew up reading a lot of historical fiction. I love traveling to palaces and I just love the whole concept. But then I also really liked the colors. I found them wearable. So this lipstick, like the blush, just drew me in and I almost didn't get it because um, I thought do I really need a peach like this this is a peach coral 
Um, it is a little creamsicle-ish, I will definitely say that. A little bright, but not super bright. The um, formula itself, which is I guess a reformulated Dior formula, Couture Color Voluptuous Care, they have 30 plus other colors. This is a limited edition. They're very lightweight, they're silky. Um, they have a slight shine to them, but there's no shimmer in it. And they're kind of, you don't, I don't feel them. Some lipsticks you really feel on your lips. I don't really feel it. So it's kind of a lighter formula. Uh, but it does last pretty well. A color like this, first, the first time I wore it, I actually wore it to yoga and I survived the class. Part of it is that there was a slight staining. So even a light color like this, I do get a slight staining. So that made it look a lot more natural. But it wears quite evenly. I do see a little kind of, if you see on my top lip, I kind of lose that definition on the top line with certain lipsticks. This one works better with me if I do use a pencil, I have to admit. Um, but it lasts a good three to four hours depending on what I'm doing, drinking water, running around, depending on the weather, which for me is about as good a wear as I can get from lipstick. So I'm going to take it off because someone had requested that I show my natural lip color so you can see what it looks like on my particular set of lips. So my lips are very pigmented. A color like this is actually taking color out of my lips um, and making my lips paler, which seems crazy. So my lips are also very rosy and kind of a strong pinkish, reddish kind of undertone. So that's going to make this look a little less orange, a little bit more pink than it will on someone who has kind of a different undertone to their lips. And um, I think it masks most of my natural color, however. Like this is pretty opaque and it's a pretty even coverage. I think this color is a little bit less even in the application than the other one I have, which is a brighter but pink. But I just really love how great the colors are in this collection. They're super natural. Um, they blend really well together, which I guess is the appeal of buying a collection that has been kind of pre-formulated to match. And then also, the spring collections to me are just a little bit softer, and since I am so busy, having more natural looking makeup works amazingly well for me. This formula, I don't know, if you read all the Dior sites, they have all these, you know, the perfect uh, perfect accessory for the woman of glamour, you know, this and that and the other. It is a fabulous formulation. I think it's $34, and these were $30, so this is not a cheap collection at all. And the blush, I think, was $42. Um, unfortunately, I'm finding that as I'm trying to buy the cheaper products, they sometimes aren't as flattering on me. So maybe it's better to have a few really nice products that look super natural and super flattering and just spare yourself the pain. So one thing I did want to try on camera, because right now, right, this is like a very natural daytime look, but I really think that one of the advantages of a look like this is that it's so neutral with just a little tweak like adding a little bit of black eyeliner not perfectly applied obviously since I did it on camera on the upper waterline basically takes a look like this from night from daytime to nighttime and you could also and I've done it take a darker brown and really mix that in as a liner and you get just a really smoky, sultry look, but kind of that brown, natural, smoky, sultry look. And since I'm going out tonight, that's actually what I'm gonna do right so now. So I've added a little bit of brown eyeliner, a little darker under the eyes, and then a little shading into the crease. And so you see, you take a very natural, soft, matte look, and then add just a little bit more eyeliner, smokiness to it, and you have a totally different look. But the lips still work perfectly. The blush still works perfectly, and these beautiful, amazing eyeshadows blend so well with other colors. They are just absolutely fabulous. So that's it. I'm going to end this now and get dressed and go out. And if you have any of this stuff and have comments or feedback, I would love to hear it. The lady at Nordstrom told me not to buy this particular color, so if you agree or disagree, I would love to hear it. She said the pink was a lot better on me, and again, I'll put a link to that in the description and I'm writing a novel on YouTube called Masks which is about makeup and all the masks that we wear so I'm going to put a link to that as well and I think that's it thanks for watching